Welcome, welcome, boys. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to pull codes and clear them if need be from your 1993 Corvette with the LT1 OBD1. So the first thing you need to do is be somewhat flexible. The next thing you need to do is tilt the steering wheel all the way up, have the seat all the way back, and then you have to climb under here like so. Ugh. To be able to jump over some pins on the OBD1 port. So now that you see the position you have to be able to get in and out of, I'll show you what it looks like under the dash. Okay, so now you want to go underneath. There's a pin you need to jumper. So from under here where that notch is, bottom left, top right. Those are the pins that need jumpered. Yeah. Yeah. Now once you've done that, put your steering wheel back down so you can actually see. Turn the key in the on position, and then this thing's going to go through code. So you have code 72. And nothing else in that module. It's going to go to module 4. 32, which is EGR. Nothing else in that module. Eighty three. And nothing else in that module. I don't remember what 72 is off the top of my head, but I do have the, the book that I can go in and look. 32 is the EGR, and then I think that other one, 84, whatever it was, I believe that has something to do with probably the ASR. That light did come on while I was driving quite aggressively, as it does sometimes. Once the blue moon will say service ASR and service ABS. Um, so that's where that's from, I'm sure, because I've never seen it before. But that usually fixes up once I turn the car off and on again, and then don't drive like such a jerk hole. All right. So now that we're uh, where we are, if you go through your trip odometer, it goes through the different decimals here. So you get your seven, press, which shows your little three lines, which is no code, essentially. And then hold the trip button to reset and goes to the next module. So you have to keep going through these again until you get your 7. Press English metric. Shows all lines. Hold the trip odometer reset and clears it. Same procedure for this ninth module. Hold. Nothing. Okay. Now if we go through this again, we won't get any codes except the 12, which is diagnostic mode. Well, theoretically, unless there's something else wrong with it. So 12 is diagnostic mode. Nothing else in module 1. Nothing in 4. And nothing in nine. So there you go, boys. That is how you enter diagnostic mode, how you see the codes in diagnostic mode, and then how you clear the codes in diagnostic mode. Like I said, I do have the Haynes manual and the factory service manual that gives me my 12 codes. So you can do the same, look at them to see what they are. And now the only way to confirm the repair has been done properly is drive the car, see if any of the codes come back. But uh, do be sure to remove your pins so you're not driving around in diagnostic mode. I'm not sure what it looks like, but I imagine your screen's going to be kind of cattywampus. It's probably not going to look like it normally does. So just remember that. And if you start driving, you're like, hey, why is my screen all messed up? Oh, yeah, my pins are, or my uh, paper clips in here. So you just get rid of it. All right. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching, boys. Peace.